Hello, it's Scott Manley here with an update to the YouTubers Space Station video. So, a bit that I didn't show in the live stream that came after was that I had left everything on orbits that would be easy to deorbit. For example, this launcher stage. If you notice during the live stream, I went to some great pains to make sure that it would safely land back in the atmosphere and, of course, ultimately crash into the ground. I'm generally quite careful when it comes to space junk. However, somebody had left a space shuttle in a polar orbit, a Buran space shuttle with a crew of four that had been sitting there for a year. Now, my upper stage actually had plenty of fuel to spare, so I thought, why not help clear up some debris that I didn't make? And perhaps it's not just debris, there are actually Kerbals on board that thing. So, yeah, we set up uh, an initial burn here. Now, this is in a polar orbit, so I had to go from the highly eccentric space station orbit and you know, put the upper stage into, the, uh, into a matching planar orbit first. That was the first step, right? Now, of course, I only have a limited amount of fuel with this, and I will need to use the rest of it to deorbit. So instead of performing the circularization burn, I am going to use a whole bunch of aero braking. And that will, of course, leave me much more fuel to perform the actual rendezvous. So we come in over the North Pole. Look at that and slice through the atmosphere at about 43 kilometers. Now, initially, we went engine first until I realized that was a really silly idea because if I decelerated too much, I would be facing the wrong way. So on later excursions through the atmosphere, we pointed the thing in the correct orientation so that if we did fall too low, we could actually shoot ourselves back out of it. As it happened, that didn't happen. So it was just left to initiate the rendezvous maneuver, which, of course, took a little bit of finagling. In particular, after setting up one maneuver node, I realized that the maneuver node was in fact in the shadow of Kerbin and I wouldn't have enough power at the time to initiate the rockets. So I moved the maneuver node around into a position which would be fully illuminated and let the rockets illuminate the night sky. Firing those up, of course, to adjust the orbit. And soon enough, Bob was indeed my avuncular relative, and I was, in fact, heading to a rendezvous with this target. Within the hour, I was sitting on their doorstep, or what would qualify as a doorstep if they were a house, but, you know, they might as well have been a house since they'd been living there for over a year. While they had, in fact, run out of fuel, at least they still had a working toilet. Now, the next step of my master plan was to perform a, well, the best thing, it would be best described as a capture maneuver here. A little bit of firing to put myself inside the docking bay. Once there, we switch over and close the docking bay, and I've got it. Now, from that orientation, I was able to rotate the spacecraft and then reopen the docking bay so I could actually have this thing firing inside it and slowing my orbital velocity so that the Buran would, in fact, come home instead of being stuck in a permanent polar orbit or, even worse, stuck in a permanent storage facility in formerly Soviet um, Kazakhstan or something. No, this uh, testament to engineering would indeed be going home, thanks to a plucky little upper stage. The little upper stage that could. Yes, this will in fact be going home. We flick it away there so that it, we can actually now uh, perform the re-entry in the clear. I'm doing the re-entry over the poles because I know the poles are actually flat in Kerbal Space Program. Without any fuel, I need to make sure that I have a flat place to land. And given that this looks like a shuttle clone, it probably has all the gliding finesse and capabilities of a chunk of cement. Of course, while it's in space, the aerodynamics of it uh, don't matter too much. We still have the reaction wheels to help orient ourselves. However, the power for that was rather diminished. It looks like I had used a great deal of power holding attitude while that thruster was firing into my back. Um, so yeah, it has no way to replenish the thrust and I can only hope that the thing is aerodynamically stable enough to survive in this high, high angle of attack 
orientation during descent. We're obviously assuming a high angle of attack so that we slow ourselves down as quickly as possible without actually uh, subjecting the thing to too much heating. So we're just trying to slow down and now I flip over and start to turn the other way. The reason you want to slow down quickly is because we needed to slow down over the pole and it looks like we successfully managed that. We're down to about a hundred thousand feet and the turn is getting harder and sharper. We're bleeding off energy, bleeding off speed and soon we will be in a straight up glide slope heading towards the surface and trying to figure out how to land this thing. Fun fact, I had not actually tested this thing to see if it could fly, so this was my first attempt at flying it. The good news is that it had very, very large control surfaces. Indeed, if you look at it from behind, you can see that the tailplane is practically as large as those wings. Yes, those large control surfaces are extremely welcoming. It gave me plenty of control authority as I descended through the clouds. It's time to switch over to old me. Okay, we've made it this far. We can see we're at 3,000 meters or 3,000 meters above the sea level, wherever that is. And you can see the beautiful white planes practically blinding us. Now, the only thing is I want I don't know how fast this thing flares. It does seem pretty responsive, but I'm going to try doing a test flare um, about a 1,000 meter altimeter. Okay, so ready, go. Oh, and that thing responds like it's on rails. Obviously, vertical rails rather than horizontal rails, but that is a good thing. It managed to slice through the air, lift its nose, and uh, we'll be able to do this. We'll be able to go right down close. I'm going to start flattening out. And where's the shadow? There must be a shadow. There's the shadow there, sitting way, way off to the side. Because, we're, of course, we are near the pole. This could be midday. Flatten it out. Watch my descent speed. Ah, oh, beautiful. I'm, I'm just gliding this thing across the surface here. Of course, real ice is unlikely to be this flat, but this is a game and I'm landing something. This is space junk. These guys should be dead, really, so they should be happy that they got back. Nice to have a drogue shoot as well. I should use that myself more often. So there we are. We rescued the Buran shuttle from the international YouTuber space station Deep Space Nine thingy, whatever. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.